Could you be missing some emergency essentials in your own home? Today, we're going to be jumping into four essentials that might be missing or out of date in your home. So if you want to be prepared for any emergency, we are going to jump right into it. Hi, my name is Brecky and welcome to Sustainable Prepping, where we empower through preparedness. Let's jump right in. But the first essential that you could be missing is having a fire extinguisher or an up-to-date fire extinguisher. Did you know that fire extinguishers actually have a shelf life? Most recommendations are to check your fire extinguisher every five to six years, especially if you have the larger older school versions of these, there will actually be a paper tag here that will give you the last inspection date. They should be checked every five to six years. And if you have one like this, this is a Kitty brand fire extinguisher we purchased new when we moved into our house this last summer. It actually tells us that this has a 12 year shelf life and will not be reliable after 12 years at most. So definitely go check your fire extinguishers. You should have big ones like this in high risk areas. This one lives over here close to our air fryer because we have an electric stove so i'm not as worried about that one but we also have this one which lives on the edge of a counter so if a fire is happening in the center of the kitchen i can grab this pretty easily and this is an aerosol uh, fire extinguisher spray bonus if you don't have this essential get your fire extinguishers you can even throw in a fire blanket they do make fire blankets this is great if you have a grease fire and you want to just throw that blanket on it especially if you have small kids who might not be able to operate one of these, having a fire blanket in your kitchen is a great essential that you should definitely make sure you have up to date and on hand. Now, the second item you're gonna to wanna to make sure you both have and check is your smoke detector and a CO2 or carbon monoxide detector. Now, most homes or rental units are gonna come with a smoke detector. I pulled my batteries out just so it doesn't beep at us while we're filming, but, you wanna make sure that it's up to date, that the batteries are good to go, and it usually will beep at you, but if you don't have a smoke detector CO2 monitoring unit like this one, this is a first alert brand combined smoke detector and CO2 unit, you are going to want to purchase a CO2 unit. Not all rentals come with CO2, and if you buy a new house, it may not have a CO2 monitor. This is important because carbon monoxide is odorless and it will suffocate you if you do not have a way to monitor it. So while we're on fire safety, you want your smoke detector ready to go, but you also want to have CO2 monitoring. A lot of folks overlook the second one. Don't be one of those people. Definitely play it safe. And if you don't have it, get your CO2 monitor. Make sure if you do have one that's plugged into the wall, it also has a battery backup. The last thing we want is your power to be out and your CO2 monitor to go down. So a battery powered smoke detector and CO2 monitor is an essential for keeping your house safe and sound. Our next item is especially for folks who live on a second or third story or who have a second or third story, and that is going to be an escape ladder. This is the Kitty brand escape ladder, and it is one that you hook onto a window ledge and the slats fall out of the window. This is again, another fire safety issue, but this can also be important for other types of disasters. If you have flooding and you are up on a second or third story, and eventually you're going to need to get down into a safety boat and you can't go down the stairs, you can use a safety ladder. If you need to escape because there is an intruder in your lower floors, you can use the safety ladder. If you need to escape a fire on the lower floor, floors, you have a safety ladder. So having one of these stored upstairs, if you have a large home, you might wanna have a couple of these in your upstairs, but really this is just a way to safely get out of up to, I think a third story drop would be, it would still be a bit of a drop, but you would be able to survive getting out um, second or third stories. So if you live on a second or third story, if you have a home with more than two stories, then get yourself a safety ladder just in case. Comment down below and let me know what is one weird safety thing that you think every house should have. Now, I'm one of those people that I think the safety ladder is a weird safety thing that every house that has more than one story should definitely have. Most people don't have them. So this is one of those quirks where I definitely think everyone should have it. Comment down below and let me know what's the weird thing you think everyone should have. So my fourth and final recommendation for home safety essentials is a little bit cheeky, but that is to have some kind of surge protector. Now this big bad boy beast mode surge protector is actually also a battery pack. So it is a surge protector, plus it charges a battery that gives me about three hours worth of charge 
automatically. Every time this is plugged in, it's charging the battery pack and then we're drawing from the battery pack. So it's a surge protector slash battery pack, but really you're gonna want a surge protector for any of your essential electronics and also your essential devices like your fridge, a deep freezer, things like that. In a disaster, you might have bad weather that causes a power surge, or you could have your electrical grid fail that causes a power surge. The last thing we want on top of the power being out, on top of flooding, on top of other damage to your property is for your essential laptop, right? <laughs> your refrigerator to be fried. And who knows how long it's gonna take to get it replaced or fixed. So invest in a surge protector. It doesn't have to be a honker like this one. It can be a standard one you get over at Staples or Office Depot, but get a surge protector to protect and ensure those expensive items, like I said, laptops, refrigerators, deep freezers, things like that, um, that would be quite costly and annoying to have to replace in an emergency. And my final bonus tip is to double check and make sure that your renters or homeowners insurance is up to date with flooding and fire. Now you may have had renters or homeowners insurance for years in the same location, but with global climate change, our floodplains have changed. A home that my husband and I were considering purchasing, which was not labeled as in a floodplain 10 years ago, is considered in a floodplain today. We ended up not buying that house because we didn't want to worry about that, but double check your insurance's flood and fire policies, make sure they're up to date and they'll cover what you think they cover. This can be totally free. You just gotta call your insurer and get the details, but that is something that will help keep your possessions safe and secure. And also if you have to replace them, there'll be money to, to replace them in the event of the worst case scenario disaster. If this was useful and gave you some ideas for what you can get done to make your house more secure and safe, give me a like. And friends, I would love it if you shared this with someone else who could use the information. I am here to empower you to be prepared in any disaster. I hope you are all doing well. Check out this video if you want to keep up with your preparedness education. And until the next video, happy prepping.